Everybody, welcome back to my Daily Dose with Tim. Today is probably one of my most, uh, my, probably one of my favorite sessions uh, since we started talking about financial education and business mindset, simply because this was one of the biggest pieces that opened up my mind. I mean, I know there's so many of them. However, for me, this was when it, when everything sort of became real in the sense that I'm a very, very straightforward, very simple guy, especially when it comes to numbers. Yes, I feel like I do fit the Asian stereotype sometimes. I'm pretty fast with numbers. Um, when I was back in Taiwan, like growing up, I would I would go to classes and learn how to use the, um, what, what's, what's that thing called with all the little beads? Ab abacus, I think. And um, I could actually calculate, let's say five digits multiplied by like seven, eight, nine digits in my head. And these days, I got to rely on calculators now as well. However, the whole point is for me, numbers are very simple and very straightforward and very easy to understand. And so again, I mean, we talked about why we talked about visions. We talked about goals. We talked about financial independence in financial freedom, all these things. And they all sound super fluffy sometimes. And I know for a lot of people, however, after all these years, I understand truly how important that mindset really is. However, like what I keep, what I just shared with you guys, this was the one piece that really just connected all the dots for me. And so I call today's session or today's daily dose a strategy session because this is something that I deal with my students a lot, depending on what their goal is. So what I'm going to start with is this. Okay, so. Everything we do is strategy based and simply because I think a lot of you guys have heard me say this now is that our approach is very, very straightforward and trust the talent really is the home of the SMP formula or the home of the SMP method, however you want to call this. And again, I did not personally invent that. I'm just going to put it out there. I don't know who did. However, and that's just one of the things, right? Just follow the footsteps of those who have come before you who have achieved what you want to accomplish and just just follow that because success really does leave clues. And so home of the SMP, I know this is something that nobody here in Canada really talks about, but at the same time, it's understandable because we are really truly the only financial education institution or academy that exists at the moment. And so from a strategy perspective, we always say whatever your goal is, and that goal usually gets boiled down to a simple number. And a lot of you guys, like what I talked about yesterday, clarity, clarity, clarity. That, that clarity really does have to exist. And sometimes you do need a little bit of help from a coach or a mentor to really kind of get that down path. Once you've got that number, it makes it so much easier to figure this out. However, let's just look at it this way. I'm going to simplify it for you guys, okay? So a lot of people understand that there is the wholesale strategy and we kind of talked about it simply because wholesale falls under the earned income bucket as when we were going through the wheel of wealth or circle of wealth, however you want to look at it. Okay. So wholesale for most people, well, we don't know how much they actually make. However, we typically aim for an average of 5,000 per deal. That's the average. Okay. And this is why I say this is a target income. And I want to really level this out with you guys. This is one of the, to me, the, the way that I usually explain wholesale and how much you can actually charge for wholesale because wholesale is an amazing, amazing strategy. However, to me, it's probably also one of the most complicated in the sense that wholesale itself to me is not a strategy. It simply is a process. Okay. And the whole point though, is that a good wholesaler actually knows a lot of the other processes and strategies that exist within the business realm, or in this particular case, real estate investing. And so for some people, they, they somehow, and I don't know, maybe it's because of YouTube and other channels and just, you know, misleading advertising. In my opinion, wholesale fees is never really fixed because some people will ask me, oh, is that a 1% fee on the purchase price? Or is that like 5,000? That's what I keep hearing. Or as long as you find somebody a dingy rundown property and that another investor wants to buy from you, it's $5,000 a pop no matter what. You know what? I'm going to completely dis disagree with that. And here is the reason why. Okay. So in my opinion, a wholesale fee really is a value add fee. Okay. So this is also wise 
we actually call wholesale fee either placement fee or finder's fee or value add fee, however you want to call it. It's just that in the general, it falls under the general umbrella of wholesale. And that's really, I guess, the, the marketing term or the street term that most people know about. And at the same time, the way I look at how much you can actually charge for a wholesale fee really should be highly dependent on the value you've added to the deal in terms of how much more, did, how much value did you create for the end buyer? Because wholesaling by definition means that you're actually not paying onto it. You found the deal, okay, here is the deal, and then you found the end buyer from you. And the end buyer is going to give you a finder's fee or a commission. Okay, and so that determines how much value you get. And I usually compare wholesales, wholesale fee to, let's say, a cup of Starbucks coffee, for example. Okay, let's put it this way. When you go to Starbucks next time, if you look up on the board and you look at, let's say you look at ordering a, I haven't been to Starbucks in a while. <laughs> you, let's say you're looking to order a grande cup of caramel macchiato with an extra shot with soy, and uh, let's just put it that way. And I believe that it's gonna come out, depending on which province you're into with taxes, it's gonna come out to be anywhere between $7 to $8.50. Like seriously, $8.50 for a cup of coffee from Starbucks these days, okay? Think about that. However, how many people in Canada, forget about around the world, how many people in Canada alone on a daily basis, let's say, forget about COVID too, order a cup of that caramel macchiato every single day hundreds of thousands if not millions actually don't know their stats however the whole point is does everybody that's buying that not understand it's definitely not eight dollars and fifty cents to make that cup of coffee however everybody's willing to justify to themselves and when starbucks asks for it all we do is take my money why? Simply because of the fact that we understand in order for Starbucks to produce that cup of coffee and put it into your hands, well, guess what? In that cup of coffee, you already have that physical cup, that, lead, uh, that lid, and the sleeves, okay, first of all. And let's backtrack that. You have a barista that's taking your order. Uh, you have a barista that's taking your order, somebody that's making that drink. That is all value as well because they know how to make it. They also got to set up the till, set up the shop, shop for the location, pay for the leases, buy the equipment, make sure they source the beans, all, this, uh, all the other ingredients as well, like the soy milk or the almond milk or the regular milk that you're looking for, the caramel itself. And more importantly, they have a corporate office. They probably have to go out there and look for farmland, plant the seeds, grow the seeds, harvest the seeds, roast the seeds, ship the seeds, bag the seeds, and grind the seeds. By the all these things, somehow, through all that process, that all of us understand in order for that cup of coffee to be put in your hand, to be placed in your hand, we are more than happy to pay the $8.50 for a cup of coffee that probably from a raw ingredients perspective costs no more than 50 cents if you think about it. So that means Starbucks in that particular case added $8 in your justified value so that you're willing to pay that amount. And that's usually how I explain how much you get to charge for wholesale fees. And just so you know, I do tell all my students that usually for the first year, depending on the number of deals that you're actually looking to wholesale, you may not be able to get up to $5,000 right off the bat. For some of you, if you are actually combining or dovetailing strategies, you might be able to actually charge more than $5,000 right off the bat as well. So for example, lease options being a very, very good example too, because again, that involves a different level of knowledge and now you're combining basically two strategies or two processes together. And that allows you to add value to the end investor who's buying the deal from you a whole lot more too. So that brings me to my, to my next strategy, which is my baby strategy, it's lease options, okay? So a lot of you guys know this as rent to own as the street name and depending on how you want to look at it, an average lease option across the country right now, and I'm in Canada, I know a lot of you guys are watching from different countries, so 
We usually aim for at least $600 a month, usually, okay? An average cash flow, this is before any sort of joint venture split. However, we're not talking about that right now, okay? Or let's say an average $20,000 a year. That is the lease options, okay? Now, the next one that I wanna share with you is income properties. So as you guys already know, income properties, we really break it down into single family homes versus multi-unit residentials. So if you have the goals to own multiple and multiple doors fast, multi-unit residential is really what you want to be looking at, not the single family homes, because that is what's going to add to your portfolio a lot faster. However, the most important thing, once again, is about how you reach your goal and how quickly you can get there. Now, with income properties, we usually aim for, and this is an after upgrades or after cosmetic repairs uh, goal. Some of you are actually doing a lot better than this, and that's totally fine. We're just giving you a simple formula right now, okay? $150 per door per month. And depending on what your aspiration is, okay, commercial. And this is something that we haven't really spoken a lot about, to be really honest. It's just that it's usually not a strategy that most people go into, at least not usually within the first three to five years of their investing career, unless you're running pretty fast and you're getting used to making offers and pulling your resources together too. So commercial, typically speaking, we say, depending on the type of it, okay? Remember commercial is things like strip malls or office spaces or warehouses or industrial bays or even storage buildings, depending on how you want to look at it. We typically look at 2,500 in terms of target income. So I don't want you to conf uh, confuse income here with cash flow because this is actually what we're saying here, okay? Which is really the net income, not net operating income either. We're gonna go into the glossaries later because as you guys know, I think this, is, this whole segment is gonna be stretched out into a few more days and a few more segments now too. So this, these are usually the four major categories and we're not talking about private lending, we're not talking about Airbnbs or short-term rentals or service accommodations for that reason. However, here is how it all comes together, okay? Um, ooh, I probably should have taken some tape and tape it behind me. Now, how I'm gonna do this, let's just say, and I'm going to use my red pen here or marker. Let's say, okay, an average Canadian family typically takes about four to $7,000 on a monthly basis to be able to operate, okay? So depending on where you sit, we're not talking about you being able to fly business class with the entire family to go to Disney World every single year, okay? That's not the lifestyle we're looking at. We're looking at an average family that typically look, uh, need about four to $7,000 a month. So let's just take a happy medium for now, okay? Say $5,000 a month is what we need, or that translates into $60,000 a year. So depending on how you wanna look at it, our goal is to look at financial independence. So financial, financial independence, once again, by definition, means that you can combine earned income strategies and passive income strategies for you to be able to not show up for work or you don't have to rely on an income or somebody else to give you a paycheck, basically, okay? So let's say if this is the number we're looking at, very, very straightforward, okay? How about, let's just say that you are actually wholesaling, okay, five, and let's say six deals a year. Right here, you have $30,000, okay? Let's say you do one lease options, then you have $20,000. And let's say income properties. I mean, you can do it however way you want to be really, really honest because some people will now say, okay, 60,000 minus 30 minus 20, that means I got a leftover or a difference of $10,000 that I have to achieve. Then it's very simple. You take $10,000 and you divide that by $150 a month, then you'll get that answer. However, 
let's just say, hey, you know what? How about we say, okay, you know what? $150 per door per month. Let's say if we have 10 units, okay? So let's say you have 10 units, then 10 times 150, okay, per month is 1,500. And then times 12 months, then that means how much per year? That's 18,000 per year. So if you add it all up, you basically, even without going into commercial, two, three, you now have an annual income of 68,000 right there. So I'm just going to be straight up with you because I, I feel like this is what, you know, why I wanted to start doing this just because there's so many noises out there in the community and in this industry, especially, I really wish that people would just stop falling for ads that say, you know what, do real estate with no money down. And we talked about that. Yes, you can, because it takes knowledge. It takes training. It takes coaching and mentoring and anybody can do it with no money down because that's how we started to do this business ourselves in our late twenties. And this is actually how we were able to grow because over 95% of our own personal portfolio, actually, sorry, not personal, just our portfolio entirely now at this point <laughs> is built on other people's money. And that's because between education and experience mixed together, that's what's allowed us to grow. However, the whole point though is, you know what, for a lot of you guys, let's say this formula works really well in my experience, not to be discouraged if you're not at that level. I have I've got a lot of students that are probably in there about late 40s, early 50s. You know, they're, they've done really well in the traditional sense financially with their career. So, you know, they've got enough of equity to play with. They got enough access, uh, access to resources and because they have good jobs to back them up. So from a traditional lending perspective, they are actually able to get qualified for the number of mortgages that need to be qualified. However, even if you are not in that situation, it doesn't matter, okay? So even if that means, hey, you know what? You might have to share the wealth a little bit. I don't know which strategy, maybe all of them. Maybe you're in your early 20s, okay? Maybe you're in your late teens. I don't care. The point is, if you can do a little bit more work, maybe double the work and share 50% of the wealth with the people that can come in and be your private lender, be your joint venture partners, you can still make this happen. So this is very, very high level, however, very straightforward. Like I said, we can talk about financial freedom, financial independence all day long. However, this is the part that really should start to connect the dots for you because it makes it so, so straightforward. So I hope you enjoyed today's session. If you find this really helpful and somebody else needs to hear this, please like the content and please share this video with who you think can add value to. And as you guys know, every single day during the week, Monday to Friday, I will be coming to you Facebook Live with my daily dose at 4.30 p.m. Pacific Time, 5.30 p.m. Mountain Standard Time, and 7.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And I'm um, just going to plug that a little bit. Tonight, I'm actually going to be an open, I'll be doing an open Q&A at 7 p.m. Mountain Standard Time. And uh, really just... All bets are off. I'm an open book. Ask any questions you want to ask because I know a lot of people are asking me not just for financial um, education information, uh, why I decided to start uh, Trust Your Talent, what was it like uh, working with Rich Dad, what was it like um, building businesses, what were the ups and downs and how do I overcome the, the low points of my life and health, all that kind of stuff. So tonight, if you're interested, just make a comment below and we will share the Zoom link with you. Actually, you know what? I'm just going to share the Zoom link with you anyway right here. So hope to see you tonight. If not, I will be right back here tomorrow. Once again, 4.30 p.m. Pacific time, 5.30 Mountain Standard Time, and 7.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Good night, everybody. Have a great evening and live well.